Good afternoon, High Performance Computing fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We are coming to the conclusion of our two, or excuse me, of day two of our three days of coverage here on the Cube. My name is Savannah Peterson. Enjoying the ride with Dave Vellante this time around. We're learning some cool stuff up here, and we're going to talk HPC. We've been talking AI right all all week. Yeah. We're really going to dig into high performance computing now, which is what the show is all about. I know. And, and you know, right, right. I've got stickers that say that. It's kind of the theme of the show. Yeah. Armando is one of the best people we could possibly have talking to us about it. Armando, welcome back. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we see each other once a year, and I'm looking forward to it every year. I know. I, talking with you. I, I get excited when I see you on the schedule because I know you're always going to give us the lay of the land. You're, you're a bit of the trend eye forecaster. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's my job. If I don't do it right, you know, I might not have a job, right? <laughs> I think in this space with your brain, you're probably pretty safe. Talk to us. You know, since since we saw you last this time last year, what are some of the trends you've really started to notice take an uptick now? Uh, well, you know, what we talked about earlier, like, you know, we actually do see the rise of Exascale now, right? Exascale has been talked about for the last two to three years. But if you look at the rise of Exascale, Really what you're starting to see now is, okay, with the rise of Exascale and these large machines and these large HPC, you know, supercomputers, guess what? New challenges arise when you try to go to that skill, right? And so when you look at Exascale, you know, what is driving is more direct liquid cooling technologies, right? If you want the highest performance, you want the best CPU, the highest performing GPU, guess what? You have to do direct liquid cooling, right? But not only that, you also see, you know, the competition, which is good. You know, what I say is, you know, hey, now you've got products from Intel. Now you've got products from AMD. Now you've got products from NVIDIA. And then when you think about this, you know, what this does for customers is, hey, how do I address the silicon diversity? And how do we enable our customers to have flexibility and choice no matter what technology they want to put in their server? That, that approach to agile innovation, I think, is absolutely so critical and something that you're paying attention to. Yeah. How, how do you build and design these systems that are going to be able to adapt into the future. It, the, there's got to be a lot of standardization that you're advocating for. Oh, yeah. I mean, so you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, Dell, we're all about standards, right? Because standards are good for everybody. Not only that, standards drive down costs for our customers, and that's what our customers want. Uh, but what's unique, you know, uh, we'll be talking a lot. I don't want to steal a rune's thunder because he's coming up next. But, you know, what we're doing is we've been working with OCP. Uh, we've actually got a rack in our booth. It's an OCP OVR3 rack. 21 inch design, but what we're, we're now looking at is, if you want the ultimate performance, it's not gonna fit in a 19 inch form factor anymore. So therefore you wanna go to a 21 inch, right? But when you look at that 21 inch, you know, when you try to pack in direct liquid cool manifolds, quick disconnects, power distribution units, right? It starts to get really packed in and the serviceability kind of goes to the wayside. And so what we did with our new design, if you go check it out, is we took serviceability to the heart of that because that's customers told us what they wanted. And so what we've done is we've actually now have an external power shelf. And so this external power shelf, we've actually taken the power supplies out of the compute tray. And by doing that with these power shelves, we're actually able to give you full performance without throttling, right? So think about this. If you have four power supplies in a server and one of those power supplies go down, guess what? You got three and guess what? Your performance suffers and degrades, right? Well, with now these external power shelves, I got six power supplies in the power shelf. I can still lose two and I still have four active and you can still run full performance. Not only that, I could put multiple power shelves and you can lose a whole power shelf and you'll still be up and running, don't have to throttle, don't have to worry about your job not running, and guess what? You come back 15 hours later, you're good to go and you don't have to start from scratch. And you guys are doing some other innovative things. And I, I don't know if it's new, but it was somewhat new to me, where instead of walking behind and feeling you know, hot aisle, you're actually, the hot aisle is inside the rack. You're doing some interesting things like that. Obviously the hybrid air and, and liquid cooling. Right. Do you see that, Armando, do you see that hybrid as sort of the, the, the norm going forward? Yeah, well, I mean, everybody takes a different path and a different route, uh, but for us, uh, we do believe in hybrid, and here's the reason why. If you direct liquid cool the CPU and the GPU, you've already solved 85% of the power problem, right? Mm -hmm. And if you could use hyper-efficient fans like we do, and essentially our specialized fan algorithms, you can actually cool that other 15% with fans. Now, here's the thing that customers have told us, right? If I try to put direct liquid cooling on voltage regulators, I try to put direct liquid cooling on memory dims, I try to put it on CPU memory, all of that. Well, guess what? You have a lot of copper throughout the chassis. And if the dim fails, it takes you an hour to get to that dim slot in order to replace it. So what we do is say, hey, just do the CPU and GPU, and then we control airflow, but oh, by the way, that gives you better serviceability for the components that typically fail the most. It reminds me of that, that $20 part in your car 
that cost eight hundred dollars to, to get to, just to get to it. <laughs> Literally, I know exactly. That's why I buy old cars. They, they, don't, they didn't design them that way. They designed them to be fixed. Yeah, just, no, it's, yeah. yeah, when you try to replace the battery, you have to take the wheel off. You're like, hey, what happened yeah. here? Hey, uh, okay. yeah. Battery should go on top. <laughs> so, this, you mentioned silicon diversity before. I mean, you guys have always had multiple suppliers, but it seems like the suppliers are throwing more at you like yes. every day. How are you managing that for, for customers, both internally at Dell and externally for customers? Yeah, so in our 17th generation server line, uh, you know, we've just announced it, but we actually have driven a new spec called DCMHS. Uh, so it's also HPC, or excuse me, OCP, I uh, said that wrong. But with the DCMHX, it's a modular host system. And what we've done is say, hey, if you all build to the same spec, we are able to essentially validate and test, and we're actually able to build that in a form factor quickly for you, right? So if we have our, you know, our partners, they come to us, hey, this is one form factor, here's another form factor. Well, guess what? I don't have time to build three different chassis for you know, these different technologies. If you all build to the same spec, guess what? I get to one chassis and I can drop whatever you want. And that's better for our customers because I give them flexibility, right? As you know, you've been in the game a long time. Not all workloads are created equal and not all technologies created equal, right? And so our customers do want to use Intel. They want to use AMD. They want to use an ARM and a CPU with NVIDIA, or excuse me, a GPU. So we want to enable all of that. And not only that, by driving the standard, guess what? We're able to essentially be agile. We're able to incorporate it faster and we're able to deliver time to, ma time to market and faster time to market as well. It, it's driving the standards, which is really important. And we're in such a green early area with that where there's still kind of that blueprint being drawn. I mean, blueprint, I guess in this case, very much being a pun, Dell being one of the people really driving that pen yeah. and, and architecting that that blueprint. But you're also talking about modular design, which I think is one of the things that's very uniquely core perhaps pun intended, to Dell's design this yeah. year. And with, I mean, you have Project Luna, you, you're doing this, you're doing this on the laptop level and you're doing this on the biggest, yeah. most powerful rack level that's right. humanly possible right now so that you can plug and play. Yeah. How, how much shorter is that hardware innovation life cycle than say 10 years ago? Well, you know, look at 10 years ago, you would typically produce a server every 18 to 24 months. Uh, fast forward where we're at where today, I mean, you know, one of our trusted partners, NVIDIA, they're producing a new product every nine to 12 months, uh, right? And so for us, you've got to drive those standards in order to be uh, agile, right? The other big thing we're doing is around direct liquid cooling. Uh, if you know anything about direct liquid cooling, right now it's a wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're driving standards is into the manifolds, the quick disconnects, the O-rings that go into that. We're actually now designing, essentially saying, hey, here's our spec and can you meet our spec? It's amazing how much is advanced in just the thinking and the discussion around those yeah. those standards. I mean, it was, it is the wild, wild west. It was kind of amateur hour. And you got these multi-hundred billion dollars, you know, investments. It's finished. And if they have a leakage, that's a problem. Right? Yeah. And so. That's now, a multi-million dollar coffee spill right there. Yeah, exactly. Water and, so, yeah. and so, and so I'm, I'm really encouraged to see all the intention you guys have put on that. And I, I got a, a tour of, um, of, of uh, Tim Shedd's he has lab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Was jealous cool. about a tour of that. Yeah. It was very cool. We spent quite a bit of time there. Yeah. And then we went inside. It was really loud, but it was great. Yeah. You, they, got, you actually got to talk to the brain trust, Ehob and uh, Tim Shedd. Yeah. 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 We love Ehob. Ehob's the regular. Ehob, great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, company. One of the things that they shared with us is, and I think this came out at OCP, maybe this year or last yeah. year, we want to drive warm, warm water yes. through the liquid cooling. How far do you think that can take us with that innovation? Uh, well, I mean, when you look at, you know, there's different specs uh, per country, right? And then there's just, everybody has different environments, different types of chillers, right? So what we try to do is we try to go for a range, uh, but everything that we do is we test within that range, right? If you wanted to use 30 seawater, if you wanted to use 35 seawater, if you wanted to use 42 seawater, we go and test and validate that all for you, all right? Uh, when you looked at that innovation lab that you mentioned, yeah. guess what? We're testing the CDUs. Guess what? We're testing the manifolds. We're testing the quick disconnects. We're testing everything within that rack. And we're, since we're doing the full solution testing, so that way when it gets to your four walls, you're not going to have those problems. And we've already tested it in our factory. That, that is not surprising and also pretty awesome to think about. Now, I, now I'm super FOMO. I have to go to the test. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm crashing the next. It was an awesome tour. Crashing the next trip to Texas. <laughs> How do you, because I can imagine there's a lot of, partners and players, frankly, who want to see their solutions inside your greater solutions or inside the AI factory. Yeah. 
What's the evaluation process like as you're thinking about which components to pull into this ecosystem? Uh, customers are always going to be our guiding light. Uh, that will continue to be what we listen to, and we're always going to listen to our customers and want, and essentially we're going to deliver the best of breed technologies based on those needs. Um, you know, when you look at our partnerships, we partner with the best, right? And not only that, the reason we partner with the best is because we know we cannot build an end-to-end -end solution on our own, right? So this is why partnerships are key. And so we're always going to partner with the best of breed, and essentially what it's going to boil down to is what customers want, when they want it, and how they want it, and we're going to do it. Well, to that end, let's talk about networking. Because you got InfiniBand, you have Ethernet, the Alter Ethernet Consortium, you got NVLink, you guys, it's like... You're like T Boone Pickens, all of the above. <laughs> you know, so, so going back to the energy sector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Oklahoma State. We're going all over. Uh, uh, we've we've really been. So, uh, what's on networking is because there's an article in the journal today about you know <laughs> the the data centers need new plumbing, and I thought they were going to talk about liquid cooling. Uh, they were talking about uh, networking. Oh, yeah. And 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 it was interesting. The article invoked Cisco, and I'm like, this isn't about switches and routers of the old days. This is about new sort of designs, both both across within the XPUs or, you know, XPU to XPU mm -hmm. and then across clusters. Yeah. But tell us about, you know, what are your thoughts on state-of-the-art networking for AI? How do you how do you think about it? Well, the beauty of this is we're going to support all three. Uh, so, you know, if you look at, you know, Michael's tweet, he tweeted it out this weekend. We are actually the first to ship the GB200 with NVLink. Uh, so we shipped that to a customer. Congratulations, by the way. It's very much. exciting. I, uh, we, saw, we saw a lot of other tweets in, in, uh, uh, on Monday. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and the other big thing is, you know, we still believe in InfiniBand, and we also uh, believe in Ethernet. You know, if you look at, you know, what Broadcom's doing with Tomahawk 5, right. you know, you're getting up to 400 gig. But the beauty of this is that customers tell us we want all three, and we're going to support all three. Uh, so if you go to look at the, you know, the rack that we have in our, our uh, in our booth, you know, Arun's going to come up next and talk a little bit about more. So it will still stun there. But if you look within that, we'll support a GB, a GB you know, uh, 200 NV Link uh, 72. We can support that. We also have another product coming out, an NV Link 4 system. That NV Link 4 system, you can actually scale out with Ethernet or essentially InfiniBand. So we offer all three options, right? Because here's the thing that you got to consider. When you start to look at HPC, we knew the fabric was always important, right? You know, that's a, you know why we did InfiniBand, right? But now if you look at that combination of HPC and AI, the fabric becomes even more important, right? And so the other thing that we're also looking at doing is not just the, you know, east-west traffic to GPU, GP communication. Now we're actually looking at the north-south yep. traffic as well, so your storage connection. And if you want to train a model really fast, guess what? You better have a quick pipe and a quick connection to your storage because you got to bring that data up and you've got to actually train the model, right? And guess what? The only way you get this, if you train the model faster, you get to insight faster. And guess once you get to that insight faster, that's what's going to make a difference. Isn't that funny how we've come Time full to value, circle? Baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've come full circle on that traffic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, we're going to support all three. And yeah. we want to support all three. And we believe customers will need all three. You mentioned, you, you. I can tell you're a community-focused, customer-focused team and being. I know that Dell is <laughs> as well. But you've definitely brought it up quite a few different times. Are there some customer use cases that you think we'll see perhaps realized or in the works right now that you are able to share with us that get you excited as a technologist uh, and mean, as a human? To me, uh, I mean, we've talked to customers this week are using AI for cancer research and you're dear to my heart. Um, you see essentially, you know, virtual assistants now where it's not just answering a simple question. You actually have to answer a question and they actually help you take proactive measures, you know? Yeah. So that's the next thing we're looking for, those virtual assistants. And then, you know, I see recommendation engines are still going to be key. And, of course, large language processing of large language models. I mean, now you see, hey, large language models with 10 billion parameters, 20 billion parameters, 80 billion parameters, right? And if you think yeah. of those parameters and essentially all the learnings you get from that, it is for the greater good. And it's going to raise all boats. And that's what I'm excited about. I, well, it certainly gets me excited. Even just sitting next to you, your excitement <laughs> is, is contagious in the best way. Can you give us any sort of preview for what we can expect next coming out of your team in the Dell squad? Uh, we, we, I can't c comment on any of that, but what I would like to tell you is please Worth stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> please Absolutely. stay tuned. Uh, you know, our number one goal is to make a difference for our customers, and our number one goal is to make a life easier for our customers, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to put the easy button on AI. We're going to put the easy button on Dell AI factory. And then Arun's going to come and talk to you about what we're doing and our factory integration as well and what we're doing with that in that area. So end-to-end -end solutions. And the other big thing that you talked about earlier with AI, it's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think about it, 
When you start small, you typically do it on a desktop or a workstation. Hey, your model gets a little bit bigger Then hey, I need a server. Hey, my model gets bigger and bigger. I need a cluster. And hey, now this is going large scale, so I don't need a cluster that's eight nodes. I need a cluster that's 164 nodes. I need a cluster that's a thousand nodes. So the beauty of this is that we want to meet our customers wherever they are at in the journey. So if you're starting small, come talk to us. If you're at the biggest of the big rack scale, let's just show you what we just did with GB200. It's one of the things I really love about Dell is, is, is that goes back to the community pieces. We're here with you on the whole journey and, and you're there to be a, not just a, a vendor, but a partner throughout that iteration journey. And, and everyone can affect your product product roadmap. Yeah, Pretty. just a little plug. We have an HBC community the event that we had Monday. And, you know, the biggest thing about the HBC community event is we have our customers come and talk about what they're doing. The customers talking about their use cases and essentially what they're delivering, because that's what's most important, right? If we make our customers successful, we'll be successful. It's that culture of collaboration that always keeps Dell at the top. <laughs> and, and, and it's inspiring to see. I think we, we see it across even on the show floor here between government, between hyperscale, between yeah. big companies, between the little guys and the startups. It's all it's all yeah. happening here, folks. Last question for you, Armando, since mm -hmm. this is our now ritual and tradition <laughs> every year at, at Supercomputing. <clears throat> and I realize you can't spill the beans on, mm -hmm. on the future announcements. I couldn't help but ask. Yeah. But what do you hope to be able to say when we're hanging out at Saint, in St. Louis for Supercomputing 2025 that you can't yet say today? What I want to be able to say is that we've enabled our customers to get faster time to value with their solutions. The necessary evil is you got to build a cluster, you got to deploy the nodes, you got to deploy the fabric, you got to deploy the storage. But the biggest thing that we want to do is we want to roll in a full solution into your four walls where all you have to do is connect the water, assign IP addresses, and let's roll, let's get going. And that's what we're all about. We're going to put the easy button on AI and HPC. Love it. Love it. I was just going to say it's that easy button, baby. We need a blue easy button. I can see it in my mind's eye. We're going to have to, yeah. we're going to, have to figure that out. Armando, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it so you. much. It's such a great conversation with you. I, I look forward to this every year. Oh, good. Well, that <laughs> makes three of us. And thank you, Dave, for quite an afternoon we've had. Oh, it's been great. Yeah, uh, I'm loving it. I hope all of you are having as good of a day as we are here learning from the world's smartest people at Supercomputing 2024 in Atlanta, Georgia. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.